Good evening, everyone. We'll call the meeting to order. Uh, Rebecca, would you please call the roll? Flournoy? Here. Hallie? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Scandy? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Tindale? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Council, any additions to this evening's agenda before we move to our consent agenda? Okay. If not, we'll move to our consent agenda uh, items. And in there, we have approval of minutes from the February 11th Council meeting. We have approval of the February 22nd payroll of $112,732.26. Acceptance of the Wayfinding Commission minutes, acceptance of the Library Board minutes, a resolution of employment in Park and Recreation for Bailey Travis, a part-time desk attendant, and also approval of liquor licenses for Revelations and the Walmart Store 985. Claims uh, in the amount of $715,435.77. Of those, uh, the <clears throat> a claim above $75,000 would be to PKG Contracting, uh, the contractors for our wastewater treatment plant, $534,565. Uh, any questions, Council, regarding those consent agenda items? If not, I entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Moved by Gandhi. Second. Second by Anderson. Uh, any discussion? Please call the roll. Gandhi? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Hallie? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Thompson? Uh, yes, but I should abstain from the minutes. Okay. Flournoy? Yes. Two Hill? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now, Council will move to our public forum, and we have uh, David Goodman here this evening to address the Council about a deer crossing on North B Street. David. Good evening. I live on campus and I go on B Street a lot. And one day I was driving just before nine o'clock in the morning. My wife was beside me and she screamed, stop. And because of that, I had a near miss that I did not hit the deer, but I came really close. And had she not been beside me, I know I would have hit the deer. I got a little upset about that, feeling that, you know, I live on, I live on campus, I live on, in Fairfield. I can go slow enough. How, what about people who are staying with us as guests or people from out of town? You're going down a hill and you have to put your brake on just to stay at the speed limit. And then you go up the hill. And this happened to me that one time and I, I came to a committee and I talked about it. And I was told, get some data. I went to the police office um, in Fairfield. They said that it would cost you so much an hour and it's an, it's a uh, open-ended, um, and you'd have to pay for it. And I don't then generally want to spend money that's open-ended. So I let it go and didn't see any deer for quite some time. And then two more events happened. One where I had to slam my brakes, luckily enough, did not hit it. And then just about a couple weeks ago, I was driving down B Street, again towards downtown, and I saw about 10 deer. I was, there was enough of them, and I saw them in the distance that I was really, that I just slowed down and stopped. I would like to have um, a sign on both sides, and that, in my opinion, would alert not so much people in Fairfield who kind of know it, but people from out of town. Yes, I've heard the jokes that the deer can't read. I believe that a sign on both sides, it, it, yes, deer, deer may, may cross north of that or south, but it puts it in people's awareness that you need to be aware. And that's all I want to do is to, to make a petition that there's a, a deer crossing sign on both sides of the highway. Where this happened was right near Crow Creek. And I know that there's deer all throughout Fairfield. Um, I don't tend to go that often around where the country club is. I'm sure there's deer there near Lamson uh, Woods and all that and other places, I'm sure. But this is where I live, and it's my request that there be a deer sign put on both sides of the highway around Crow Creek, and I'm willing to pay for it. That's it. That's my presentation. Okay. Thank you. Uh, now, has this, do I understand that this went through public safety at one time? I went there, yes. Okay. So if we could have a report from public safety, what, we, what was the discussion about it at that time? So uh, David came to a meeting some months ago, it was on the agenda, and as per our standard, we ask our department heads who are street department and police 
for their input. And Daryl Bisgard Street Department superintendent felt that it's not common to put these on streets that aren't, uh, that don't have a higher than 35 mile per hour speed limit. That, that's, that's not, it's not a standard to do that, which is what B Street has. <clears throat> and then we asked uh, Police Chief Thomas if there were any stats of that area of, of crashes, and he said he wasn't aware of any. It's not something that was on the police's radar as a high crash area. So then we asked, uh, asked the fellow committee members if anyone wanted to take this to council, and none did. So it didn't move from committee. I told David at that point that he could then come to full council if he wanted to, to petition the full council. And that's how it, that's okay. how it was left. Thank you. Council, any any responses? I, I know that is a heavily wooded area, um, no question about it, and there are other dense wooded areas uh, in in town that yeah. obviously would would be perfect uh, deer habitat as well. Um, you know, we did put in place a, a new policy for culling some of the deer in our community. Uh, I don't know that we're really working with DNR to track numbers specifically on that, but we have taken some steps to mitigate the deer. <clears throat> but comments on uh, signage. Um, My biggest uh, concern is if we put up a sign anywhere in town, whether it's B Street or down by the Country Club, we're kind of opening a Pandora's box because just the other day, I mean, you can drive any street, Fillmore, Harrison. <laughs> I mean, they're everywhere. My street, I live on a dead end. <laughs> They don't even care that it's a dead end. I mean, and so my fear is that if we take that on, I appreciate your willingness to pay for the signs, mm -hmm. but if it starts, then where do, where do we stop it? Um, and not only the sign, I mean, the sign cost is one thing, but then we have the labor to put it in the ground, and then you have maintenance, so you have to worry about, you know, right of ways and things like that. So my fear is that we start it legitimately, they could be all over town. And I know that we have a lot of signs already I, to maintain. I agree. I mean, you can put them right. every 100 yards in some spots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, like on D Street, they just walk right up and down the street. They don't even, they cross, but they walk on, you know, if you go in your car, they're walking right along beside the car with you. And then they finally decide that they'll come and graze at our yard, you know, anywhere from 8 to 10 and then they race across and go over to the country club and then they race back again. And so we have a tremendous number of them. I, I really hope admit. the effort that we started with culling the deer and, and trying to <clears throat> encourage them out, um, won't, we won't see results for that in at least probably the first two to three years. Right. But eventually, hopefully they'll realize this is not a safe space and they'll start moving back out. But I'd be curious to know how many licenses or tags we sold. Do you know? For the no, end. I can have an answer for you next. No hurry, I'm just curious. We can yeah. an update on that. That'd be a great. I know on campus, MU and campus, I think they cleared a section of wood. They did. Uh, on campus because deer were gathering there. I know that sidewalk that runs on B Street, north and south. That wasn't the sidewalk. That sidewalk was only put in place a few years ago. There used mm -hmm. to be woods which came up right up to the road. I think deer gathered there so I, th I think at least right, right now compared to what it was like three or four years ago there's a little bit more warning for a driver coming up and down b street you're going to see the deer because of the sidewalk to the well as you're going north the sidewalk to the um, east you're going to have a little bit more uh, warning that there are deer uh, gathering or crossing and on the other side on the west side it's mostly lawn uh not so many trees so you're going to see the deer on the west side. So while I appreciate that a signage would make uh, give some people some alertness, I think even even the visiting driver, there's enough vis uh, visibility on both the east and west side as you're going north on B Street or south, that you're going to see the deer either on the lawn or in the or off the sidewalk. So you're going to have some warning rather than as opposed to a deer right up against the side of the road where you don't see them, they just sort of dart out. So uh, the, I do have, I share the same concern that if you have a sign or you, you put in place signs on B Street, that what you're talking about, you're going to have uh, citizens around the city ask for something similar and it's going to end up being an ex maybe, maybe, maybe a, there's a concern of it too much notice. But I, don't, I haven't seen anybody else request this. I'm the only one. I, has anybody else made a request for this? We've had deer complaints, and it's not as much as they want us to put up signs. They want us to do something about the deer population, right. which we're, this is our first year of 
putting in force a new effort. And we're going to do work that out there, aren't we, along Crow Creek? So we'll be doing a little bit more clearing mm -hmm. with our step two. The only, right? I think the only difference in this situation is and getting back to the speed limit. The municipal right. speed, speed limit is 25. It is. And at 25, that should be, if somebody is right. going to speed limit, that should be enough to, to slow down. I know, but the that thing is. That's, that's, that's my point. My point the is. you're going at, down a hill. My point is that at that area, it's 35. So it is a little bit higher speed than some of the other areas that we're talking about. It's, it's not 50 or 55, which is where you really, it, it appears that that's where the signs are really intended for, um, more on that highway. But if there was one place in town that it maybe is justifiable, there is a little bit higher speed limit there. What about the idea of, uh, I don't know if this is possible or even, uh, something that the council would support, but if you had one sign on one side of the road. Which what? side? I don't know. Oh. Maybe on the east side, on the sidewalk side, as you're driving north. I just think that for a person like myself, I'm aware. I'm completely vigilant going down there. I know there's deer. And so I have nothing to gain financially from this. This is totally a citizen's request. I think that for the, all the people who visit, who, who aren't aware that, there's, that that's going to be possible, those are the people that I'm concerned about. And I'm lucky I didn't hit one. I slammed my brakes because my wife alerted me. Um, and then I would have been one of the statistics. You, you say you're aware. I'm you aware to go slowly there. Do we have many reports of visitors who had a concern? I don't know. And it's just a hypothetical. I mean, it's just like, it seems to me that you're going down from the northern part of the city and you're going down a hill. And the only way to get down that hill in the speed limit is to have your brakes on. I actually tested that. Um, so. Yeah, it's still 25 down the hill. <laughs> it goes to 35 at the bottom. Don't give the police any idea. Yeah. I mean, I'm, well, I'm, I'm over there. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm council. I, I appreciate that you brought the issue directly to the council and that it didn't didn't come out of committee. Um, is there anyone that is supportive of this idea that would support Mr. Goodman's request to allow for signs to be placed in that area, even for a maybe a designated period of time, to see if uh, it is effective or how whether it's appreciated by people? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, 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 live in a, I live on B Street myself, and that's the ward that, uh, for which I was elected as city council. So I, I drive up and down B all the time, all different times of day and night. And yeah, there are deer a lot, sometimes walking across the street, sometimes standing in the street, sometimes wondering what <coughs> I doing there driving. They're pretty comfortable. Um, mm -hmm. But there is enough, I, I do think there's enough vision on both the east side and the west side as you're driving north or driving south to see the deer before they come to the road. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to, and the mayor said this is an idea, maybe a suggestion for a temporary sign to see maybe what the response might be to, from the rest of the community, a sign, maybe one sign, uh, somewhere placed in the road um, and the city can see what the cost might be, whether or not it's a, it's a burdensome to maintain it, whether or not it results in perhaps some greater sense of safety by the citizens there. But uh, if it doesn't, and or if it be, turns out to be something that's going to be burdensome to the, burdensome to the city, I think we ought to we ought to think about making maybe after a trial period removing it. And if not, we maybe we keep it. I appreciate that. <coughs> so, if that's uh, a suggestion or a motion, uh, entertain that to see if there's support for that. The motion is that the city. Can't, I guess I'm a point of information. Can the city ask that a citizen actually pay for the solution? I don't know that that's really our issue, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, no cost is I don't think, think cost was our concern. If you, if you, yeah, if you approve a sign, we'll. Uh, make I a make sign a motion that then the city uh, look into and install on a temporary basis, let's say 90 days, a, a sign, one sign, a warning of uh, possibly a deer 
uh, at a strategic location to determine. <laughs> now, I don't know if we're going to pay for a sign for 90 days. Okay. <laughs> well, I would just say either you're going to put the sign up or not put it up. I, I personally, I don't think you need to go with anything temporary. Okay. Well, then uh, the motion is to uh, place a sign uh, on B Street warning of uh, deer. Deer crossing. Okay. Do, do you want to include, to, to Katie's point, that maybe we include something about on limited to streets with speed limits of 35 or higher? So not everybody in town is, sees the one, and, and then it's going to start one one also. Uh, if you're and, talking in the Crow Creek area, isn't that the 25? That's 35 actually oh, going at over the Crow bottom Creek. of the hill. Yeah, just before you get to Crow okay. Creek, it becomes 35. 35. Okay. Because I mean, I, we're we're in the same boat as everybody else. I came home. We live in the middle of town. I came home the other night. And we had seven laying in my yard. So they are all over. They're literally everywhere. Yeah. Uh, I'm fine with adding that to the motion, yeah. yeah. Again, I'm not sure it's a solution, but I think it's worth trying, yeah. Okay, so the motion then is to approve uh, one sign for North B Street. Um, for northbound traffic, so on the east side, right? On the sidewalk side or <clears throat> on the non-sidewalk side? I think on the sidewalk side. It's a two-way sign. You're going to see it from both sides, yes. Right. Okay. So that would be on the east side, and it would be... Um, uh, the condition of that is uh, that it is in a 35 mile an hour speed zone. Now, is there a second for that? I'll, I'll second it. Okay, second by two hill. Any other discussion? Not please call the roll. Gandhi? Yes. Two hill? Yes. Thompson? No. Anderson? No. Hallie? No. Flournoy? No. Rasmussen? No. Okay, motion fails. But thank you very much for bringing our attention to it. Okay. Okay. Next council will move to a request for uh, street closure, and this is for the annual uh, farm show. Um, Rustin uh, Lippincott, the uh, director of the CVB, will not be able to be here this evening. This is uh, the fifth year for this event, so I think it is something that um, you've approved in the past. Uh, I think you have a copy of the map uh, in the request. Uh, <laughs> Did you see our map? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Those are the new model John Deere tractors that are coming out. Jason, can you put the map on the <laughs> monitor, please? Uh, like, don't embarrass Rustin like that, please. He'll. Uh -huh. I think he'd, he'd be proud. I think he'll be very it's, proud. It's of refrigerator this. worthy. Yeah. Just kid drew that. <clears throat> Post that on your fridge. <laughs> okay. There you go. Those. Those. Those are some big back. Knowing that it's a farm show, I can see tractors there. So. <laughs> Uh, so the request then is to close um, Main. Uh, Main Street, and I guess that is between Briggs and Hempstead. Just that one block, Second. yep. Yeah, just that one block. Approval. So. Second. Second. Oh. Moved by Flournoy, second by Halley. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same sign. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Castle, we'll move to our resolution action items. Uh, first, we have uh, the um, confirmation of selection of an engineering company for the Highway 1 South project. Our city engineer, Melanie, give us some background on that, please. Yeah. Um, so the first thing I want to point out with this selection is that it was not a price proposal that the company submitted to us or to the committee, um, that it was uh, considered based off of qualifications. Three, four, Three companies submitted to the request for qualifications, uh, Shive Hattery, McClure Engineering Company, and French Renneker. Uh, the committee felt that all three were re reputable and decided to interview all of them on February 4th. Each company had unique assets to bring to the project, and after much discussion and a uh, couple meetings and checking with some references, the committee voted four to one to recommend Shive Hattery as the engineer for the project. Um, your motion tonight is um, simply to authorize Aaron and I to begin, for lack of a better term, negotiation with Shive Hattery to enter into a contract. The engineering agreement will come to council once that's prepared. Um, Nathan with uh, Shive Hattery is here tonight. Um, to, he's the project manager for the team and he can answer any questions or give you a brief update on Shive, Hatt Shive Hattery if you'd like. Okay. I would put you on the spot and just say what, what's shown. What made them shine above the other firms? Michael? I can answer. I was on that committee. As you know, there's discussion of using a uh, roundabout at the intersection mm -hmm. of uh, Highway 1 South and 
um, Libertyville, and Chef Hattery has the most experience installing those in Iowa, and they also have a lot of experience installing them as a first in a community in Iowa. So those were two huge uh, pluses that just made the committee feel like they would uh, just felt comforted that they had that level of experience for this kind of project. Because this is a very unique project for us. It's a, it's a first. So uh, I think that that was the consensus, I believe, for our choice. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any questions for our guests from Shive Hattery? If not, um, I'm sure we'll see you again. <laughs> so entertain a motion to um, confirm the selection of Shive Hattery for the Highway 1 South project. So moved. Second. Moved by Hallie, second by Anderson. Any discussion? Not please call the roll. Hallie? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Flournoy? Yes. Two Hill? Yes. Rasmussen? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Gandy? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, next council, we have a public hearing uh, that we'll open, and this is on approval for the drawings, specifications, and form of contract for the City Hall Accessibility Project. Uh, I'll open the public hearing at this time and ask if there are any comments, public comments. Okay. Seeing done, we'll close the public hearing, and Melanie, if you can give us an update on the project, please. Um, yeah, I'd like to direct the council's um, attention to the summary that Jason's bringing up. Um, on the screen. This letter was uh, written by Cindy Larson of Klingner Associates, the architect on the project, and this does a good job of uh, writing out what is happening rather than uh, having you go through the plans. Um, but what I'd like to point out and discuss with you particularly is in her first paragraph she states that in some areas the existing configurations of the building prevents full compliance with ADA requirements. <coughs> In all cases, the non-compliant features are either unchanged, therefore creating no more hazard than they already are, or are improved to create less of a hazard. And the, um, there's, two, there's only two of these items that she wants to point out. The first one being on the exterior ramp. Um, ADA requires that there is a railing on both sides of the ramp, so we're gonna keep the outside railing that is there. And then we're gonna be installing a handrail along the building um, against the brick. ADA requires that that handrail goes to the platform or the landing and beyond. That is where our doors are. And um, so In her, what? In both directions. Yes, yeah. And so her and I decided that having two egress doors for a public meeting space like this um, was the higher priority than extending that railing up um, all the way, thus making only one entrance. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Mm -hmm. so we discussed this this afternoon, but the the new design has the two doors inset. Correct. Okay, so mm -hmm. why wouldn't the railing go? So it, it actually isn't the doors, it's the, the window that is still there or the lighting because... It would have to go past the lighting that's past the that state. Lighting, the, right. the, so it's not actually the door itself because they can use the first door uh, to enter it. It's really that. Uh, and did we may did we maybe consider taking that out? And um, well, it's uh, it would be the not only is the the glass that doesn't open well would that that would be covered up by the handrail, but also the southern door would be covered would be up, covered even with them also, even because we consider the northern door the actual entry point the right one okay and and then uh well it's uh based off of where the landing is i'm sorry and um but if we would extend it all the way we would only have one entrance and exit even with it being pushed back into the building and one doorway right. and um given the capacity of city hall um the two doors are really needed for exit so, yeah that would be a violation of the fire code um, yes. So it was one or the other, and we, I, I'm not for sure if it's the fire code, that's why I hesitate, but it is a violation of, of um, life safety standards. And so that is why we chose to go with that, because um, we are making the situation better than what it is now. Um, the only other solution would be to rebuild the ramp, and um, felt that wasn't a, a, the way to go for this project and the way to spend the funds. Uh, as we continue on down the page, it just it talks about the rest of the project. As the mayor mentioned, um, we are bringing those doors in, the outside doors into the building, two feet. So there won't be, um, you'll be able to walk around the doors uh, when they're open. 
which I think we've all gotten caught there at one time or another. Um, also, and I think it's on there, um, also in the front vestibule, there is just a very small ramp that's in between the two doors. Mm -hmm. Again, I think we've all um, uh, walked over that and kind of stumbled a little bit. That is going to be flattened out, so it's a straight slope between the two doors. That does meet ADA um, compliance, um, but we'll, we'll make that a lot better. Um, in the reception area, we have the lower um, billing clerk station, um, as well as opening up the hallway to the bathrooms to provide a little bit be better visibility, not into the bathrooms, but to the hallway, so you know that staff knows if, if somebody's back there. Um, and then the restrooms, the largest change is going to be the restrooms, um, making them ADA accessible. Um, in the council chambers, we have the the ramp that will be along this side. The podium is going to more or less stay where it is. Um, because we have a wireless microphone, we'll keep it at the height, uh, but we will have a ramp um, that, and a railing that would come behind me. Um, also in the council chambers, the back exit door is going to be switched to an outswinging one, which is again another um, life safety improvement that the architect recommended. The only other item that doesn't 100% meet ADA compliance is the rear entry door. Um, there needs to be 48 inches between the outside door and the inside door. Um, to get that full 48 inches, we would have to reconstruct um, the wall to the mayor's office. There's that window there. We're about seven inches short. Uh, we decided that if there was an employee that needed um, proper accommodations, they would likely have a parking spot on the front of the building, and therefore the most direct access to the building would be through the front. Um, so having the back door 100% accessible, um, uh, we felt like this was a good, again, a good use of the money given that we, we do meet it in other areas. Other than that, um, the uh, building's gonna, or the inside's gonna get a bit of a facelift, uh, new carpet in here and painting as we're doing the work. So um, uh, it looked, uh, a, lot of, a lot of items are being replaced. As far as uh, timeline, oh, that's you. Well, I just had a question that mm -hmm. this was required by the USDA, right? Correct. So did they sign off on this plan? They have, to, they have allowed us to go to bids. They have told us in every single email <laughs> it's the city's responsibility to make sure the project is ADA. Um, uh, that it meets ADA. And um, we've asked them to say, well, are you okay with this? And they said, no, it's the city's responsibility. So um, like our sidewalks downtown and stuff, we've done our best to accommodate. And um, that's, it m wouldn't necessarily hold up in court if, if it was brought to our attention, but given uh, the funds and the situation and the building, uh, we don't feel like we can really accommodate any better. I, I think I need like an attorney but, but to answer that better. But they're, but they're not going to hold up. The they're not going to hold up our money. Right. They're saying that we w we can we have the ability to set the standard for for our building. Yeah. They're not going to allow us to break Department of Justice justice regulations, but they're also not going to enforce it. I'm, yeah, that's my understanding. Yeah. ADA enforcement is a little bit of a gray area. There's there's uh, they give you credit for making your best effort and oftentimes don't hold you to exact standards. I'm only concerned about the USDA releasing their money. Their money. And, <laughs> yes, they, they, have, they have allowed that and they've okay. signed off allowed for us to go to bid. I think the good. ultimate question is, would Mr. Morsi be willing to defend us? Yes? Okay. We We're getting now. a head nod back there. Yeah. So. I love going up there. <laughs> Head on and then absolutely. Okay, any other questions for um, our city engineer at this time regarding uh, this project? The last thing I want to point out oh. if there aren't any questions is um, the timeline. If you uh, approve this is we'll start advertising for bids tomorrow. We have a pre-bid meeting scheduled for March 5th or March 6th at 11 a.m. Bids are due March 21st for consideration at your um, second meeting in March. The architect's estimate for the work is 230,000, which um, gives us more than 20% contingency in the budget going in into bids. And if all goes well, uh, we hope to start work uh, 
sometime in May. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Melanie. Appreciate that. And the uh, the pictures were, the, uh, yeah. the renderings were inspiring to see. I like, look forward to the front of the building really going through that transformation. So I entertain a motion then to approve the drawings, plans, specifications for contract of the City Hall Accessibility Project. So moved. Moved, to approve. moved oh. by Anderson, second by Rasmussen. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same sign. Thank you. Yes, we'll set a uh, next item would be to set a public hearing for March uh, 25th, uh, which would be the two council meetings from tonight. And that would be for the nuisance abatement uh, schedule of assessments. And again, these are delinquent ch uh, charges that have been assessed to people who've either not mowed their lawns or shoveled their walks. And um, if those aren't uh, taken care of before that time they will be assessed on their taxes so entertain a motion to set the public hearing for march 25th so moved moved by thompson second second by gandy all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. all those opposed the same sign uh, next we have a public hearing on our uh, fiscal year 2020 budget and that we will set for the uh, next meeting which will be monday march 11th at 7 p.m. So uh, the budget process has been completed. We'll get an update on that from the Ways and Means Committee this evening, but I entertain a motion to set the public hearing for the budget on March 11th. So moved. Moved by Thompson. Second. Second by Gandy. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same sign. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, acceptance of the Court Street right. Extension Paving Project as final. We're gonna invite Matt, if he would, Give us an update. Uh, you, we have the information in your letter, but uh, if there's uh, anything else that you no, need I to No, I guess what we have for you tonight is the acceptance of uh, Court Street, which is, as most of you know, is a part of the district for the Neighborhood Builders and Developers Project. Uh, out there, I believe the original, let me get my notes here. We have two pay estimates on there for you tonight. The first is the final for the seating, which was completed in November. And the second is just for the project retainage. Uh, typically, we would hold these projects back and not accept them until the spring or summertime to make sure that the grass has grown. But given that the uh, alliance and the utilities have kind of torn up some of the seeding, the developers out there have decided to go ahead and accept the seeding themselves. So if there's any issues that need to be redone, then the neighborhood builders and developers would take care of that when they're doing their project seeding for the townhomes. We're just not sure spring's going to come this year. Sure. So. Yes. <laughs> so the two uh, amounts council would be thirty-eight hundred dollars um, and nine thousand six hundred thirteen dollars and ninety-three cents in retainage. And so. we're releasing the retainage tonight. Yes. Okay. And tonight would start your uh, the four-year bond work on the project as well. Yeah. I move to approve. Second. Move, move by Hallie. Second by Anderson to. Uh, accept the project as final um any other discussion not i all just have one question yes, do ahead. we have it in writing from neighborhood builders that they're going to take on that responsibility i get an email from Chris. you do have yes. it in writing yep. okay okay any other comments council not all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. all those opposed the same sign thank you thank you appreciate that Next council, we have um, two items uh, by resolution, and this will be to accept legal services uh, with our city attorney, John Morrissey, for step two, and also for the city accessibility project. These are required uh, because of the, US, the use of USDA funds um, to have this as part of our public record. So we'll take the first one, and that would be for accepting legal services agreement with um, Mar Morrissey Law for step two. Move to approve. Moved by Rasmussen. Second. Second, second by Gandy. Uh, any discussion? Not all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same sign. Thank you. And then uh, similarly, uh, in alignment with the USDA project at funding for the City Hall Accessibility Project, acceptance of legal services and agreement with uh, Morrissey Law, entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Moved by Thompson. Second. Second by Rasmussen. 
Any discussion? Not all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same sign. Okay, thank you. Uh, next council will move on to uh, bonding approvals. And Melanie, if you can give us an update, these are both uh, related to step two dollars. Uh, they were allocated at different times, but. Um, right, so uh, the step two project, we, are, um, we have three property owners left to, um, to sign, but uh, they have all given us positive feedback on that. And we hope within the month, uh, we have all three of those signed so we have started on the laundry list of paperwork that USDA is requiring, which includes the authorization of uh, these two loan resolutions. Um, after talking with the mayor before the council meeting, I double checked with Sherry Rice as to why we have two loans. And it was not because they came at different times, because they're so quoting Sherry Rice, their software is so old, they cannot make a loan greater than $10 million. So that's why you have two <laughs> That's why you have two loan resolutions in front of you that total $11,124,000, which is the estimated uh, total project cost for step two, uh, construction, contingency, engineering, and easements. Which office is Sherry with? USDA Rural Development. We're Mount Pleasant. The ones that have been shut down? <laughs> yes, the, that one. What software do they use? So, Council, that, and part of the reason we have these two resolutions in place um, so that as we move in towards financing these projects with interim financing, that we have that guarantee uh, that we will be uh, engaging with the USDA for this borrowing. So the first resolution then would be for $2,124,000. And again, this would be for uh, step two improvements to our wastewater treatment. Motion to approve. Moved by Anderson. Second. Second by Tuhill. Uh, any discussion? Not please call the roll. Anderson. Yes. Tuhill. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Flournoy. Yes. Rasmussen. Yes. Halley. Yes. Gandy. Yes. Thank you. And then to complete the full uh, borrowing, uh, entertain a motion to approve $9 million in borrowing uh, for the same project. So moved. Moved by Gandy. Second. Second by Anderson. Any discussion? Not please call the roll. Gandy. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Halley. Yes. Rasmussen. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Flournoy. Yes. Tuhill. Yes. Okay. Thank you. The next council, I'll invite our city attorney, John Marcy, up. We have um, easement land acquisitions for step two to go over this evening. Melanie says we only have three left. That means we have, if you approve these tonight, we have 74 of 77 in the bag. Wow. So uh, this step two project is considerably more, uh, I guess I'll call it paper intensive than step one was. Step one's an expensive project, but this, this is an extensive project as far as all of the different backyards and uh, people's uh, driveways and so forth that we're interrupting to get uh, our pipe below the ground. And the, th uh, and the three remaining are projected to be as easy as these last three? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say that. One of them's been holding out a long time and two of them, it's a matter of more negotiation. Wouldn't that be a fair statement? Uh, yes, but we, uh, we've had positive communication within the last couple right. days. I don't want to take away anything positive. Okay. Yeah. Getting close. Uh, so the three we have tonight, uh, two of them involve permanent and temporary um, easements. Um, the way they're on your agenda, uh, they start with uh, Brenton and Rachel Clark. The third page of the resolution describes what we've agreed to do with them. Uh, I think the biggest thing with uh, Brenton was that we agree to uh, not allow construction to take place between uh, October 1st and January, it should be January 15. Uh, that's an important hunting season at this particular location is what I can figure out. But other than that, uh, they agreed on a price of uh, $12,950 plus $100 for uh, the proof of their title origin and uh, 
we get 2.52 acres of permanent easement and 6.11 acres of temporary easement, uh, which is an important single tract for this uh, improvement. So, um, any questions? Okay. Thank you, John. I entertain a motion then to approve the acquisition from the clerks. So or, moved. Uh, the uh, easement acquisition, that is. Moved it. Moved by <laughs> Flournoy. Second. Second by Gandy. Any discussion? Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same sign. Okay. Yeah, our second tract is uh, Jim and Nancy Horace over at uh, 1208 Cody Circle. Uh, they are basically providing a uh, temporary easement. Uh, the cost is $910, and uh, I'm recommending that uh, this be approved. Okay. Thank you. On plus 100 for the. Uh, I say plus the 100. 100 for the uh, title right. insurance. So yeah. moved. Moved by Flournoy to approve. <coughs> Second. Second by Anderson. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same sign. And the last track tonight is uh, Mitchell Price and Judith Hans uh, uh, over on Pleasant Plain Road, 607 Pleasant Plain Road. Um, we've agreed on a price of $7,000 plus the $100 for the uh, title origin uh, uh, certificate. Uh, part of the money included in this includes a about half of the money for either tree replacement or tree removal. Uh, we get an 18 hundredths of an acre of permanent easement. We get uh, 21 hundredths of an acre of temporary easement. Uh, and we have, I, mean, I think the between the acquisition agent and the um, city um, offices involved in the background on this, uh, we've agreed with each of these three um, situations that we will uh, give careful consideration to their particular site. Uh, there's some landscape concerns and stuff like that. So uh, the prices have uh, agreed that it's fair as far as the tree work that's going to be involved on theirs, and I recommend it for approval. Okay. Thank you, John. And for our final one this evening, I entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Moved by Flournoy. Second. Second by Gandy. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same sign. Okay. Thank you, John. We'll Thank see you, you for the last three. Ms. Castle, in my report, I uh, have one uh, reappointment for you this evening to the uh, Carnegie Museum Board, and that is uh, Shelley Urban. So I'd like to recommend Shelley for reappointment. So moved. Moved by Hallie. Second. Second by Rasmussen. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same sign. Thank you. And then just a quick update on the downtown lighting project. Um, at last week's Ways and Means Committee, it was discussed uh, because there, <clears throat> there uh, is money that's been designated in the budget before budget final budget approval of this item. Uh, we did contact <coughs> Alliant and uh, they were willing to uh, write an RFP that we could quickly get out to some other potential bidders uh, to, you know, come back with the best possible option for the city in terms of pricing. So we're hoping to have that for you by the next meeting uh, and to get something out for approval in that regard. Uh, so that uh, is, is underway. Um, that's everything that I have in my report. We'll move to our Can I ask report. a question? Yes, sure. Just from lack of knowledge, what is, where is the funding for the downtown lighting? Where is it proposed to come from? So that's that that's was the that was a discussion. Okay. Um, it uh, it's intended to come from the uh, backfill payments. Okay. And uh, over the next uh, three to four years. Now, there is an absolute certainty on those uh, payments, but it doesn't appear that the legislature is going to change anything in this uh, session. The last, uh, the last bill that they were considering had Fairfield um, receiving three more years of payments. 
Um, but this is, you know, the Ways and Means Committee had a good discussion about this. They have other options for uh, funding this forward as well. But I think uh, before they make a recommendation to the council on how it will ultimately be funded, uh, we wanted to get the best possible price uh, in front of you before we did that. D Tom, Doug, does that cover it? I, I think that yeah. pretty well covers okay. it. Uh, any other questions then? All right, great. Then we'll move to our Ways and Means Committee meeting. Tom. Um, well, again, as, as the mayor said, uh, we had a meeting last Wednesday. Uh, we do have a proposed budget that will come before the council uh, next week. Um, just in general, uh, I think the uh, the millage rate, you know, not the overall taxes, because uh, the assessments we have no control over, but the uh, it's down, I think it's about 14 cents. Mm -hmm. uh, but the one thing in there is a schedule that Rebecca attached to these, if you go back up to the, uh, uh, where it was talking about That's the- to set the public hearing. Yeah, to set the yep. public hearing. Uh, there's a schedule there that for about the last 10 years, mm -hmm. I think that it shows the uh, assessed values that we've had in the military. So it kind of gives you a little history so that you can see what has happened with the- Grown by 31% in yes, the last 10 right. years. Mm -hmm. yeah, and also, and so the, uh, the, the assessed values have definitely gone up and the, uh, the overall tax asking on the millage rate basis has decreased, you know, which is uh, what we're trying to accomplish. So, but again, that, and some of you, uh, I, I know several had already asked for the, some of the details on the budget, uh, if there's other things that you wish to see, like contact Becca and, and she will, she can, uh, hopefully she can send it to you without cutting down any more trees, but uh, you know, if you need it by paper, that can happen. Mm -hmm. so. Great, thank you. Uh, any other questions for the Ways and Means Committee? If not, we'll move to uh, project update, Melanie. <coughs> Already covered a lot of the items uh, that's on my update tonight. Uh, mainly, the first page is entirely sanitary sewer projects, I just noticed. Um, the one that I want to point out to you tonight is that um, after several years, we are finally moving forward on the Libertyville Road sanitary sewer project. Um, this project includes uh, 3,300 feet on the north side of Libertyville Road and 3,000 feet on the south side of the road. We have all of the easements and friend Schrenecker is finishing up the drawings and the specifications. Um, we hope to go to bid in the next 30 days. Uh, I do intend to send a letter to the property owners, giving them some more specifics once, um, once I have final drawings and specifications. Um, but I, again, I wanted to let you guys and the property owners know that uh, this project is moving forward finally. Uh, and other than that, I think I've covered everything or it's uh, no new information since the last update. So unless there's any questions, that's all I have. Okay, thank you, Melanie. Thank Appreciate you. it. Council, if there isn't any other business before us, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Thompson. Second. Second, Second by Two Hill. <laughs> all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same sign.